Hi everyone, I'm Michael. And I'm Mitchell. And we are with Magical Keys Vacations. We are your favorite travel agents that love to help you. And today, we are completing our Disney 101 series with part four. Isn't that exciting? Hope you watched all of them so far. If not, make sure you check them out. But let's get ready for part four. All right, so at this point of our videos and your trip, you should have your dining reservations done, your My Disney experience set up, your hotels booked, and you should pretty much be ready to go. Yes. So we're gonna talk about the little things now. One of, we one of, oh my goodness, I cannot talk. One, which is gonna be your packing list. So when you're prepping for a Disney trip, you definitely want to make sure you have made a packing list. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, we have one for you that you'll be able to grab for free. Score. Now, when you have a packing list, you want to make sure you know, you're getting all the essentials, any type of clothing that you might need while you're there. Um, if you're having kids, that's going to change up what you're doing as well as what time of year you're going. Yeah. So having a checklist that you can mark off as your packing is super important. Now, speaking of outfits, which I love to do, we're going to talk about what we do first and then what we want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. We like to also always plan out our like theming for which park we're going to. So if we're going to Animal Kingdom, we kind of do a tribal like Lion King or even like Avatar kind of outfits. Magic Kingdom, you know, fun, Mickey ears, stuff like that. Hollywood Studios, he loves to do Toy Story, Pixar, anything like along those lines. And Epcot, you know, food, anything food. So we have like cute little outfits that we always plan for each day of the park. But... One thing that we want to try to do going into the future is Disney bounding. It's so cool to do. You pull out your whole outfit regarding like one kind of character and you try to make it as beautiful, as fancy, or as down low as possible. But it's still something that represents that character that you picked. Now that's just what we like to do. For you all, how to help you out, like you said, depends on what kind of, or when you're going and what kind of weather you're going to go into. So if it's going to be like spring, summer, Clearly, we go for more shorts, tank tops, maybe possibly bring a hoodie if it does get a little bit colder in the evenings. Um, we love to wear flip-flops or sneakers, something comfortable that you want to be able to walk in. And of course, our Disney ears or sunglasses to make it more exciting. If you are going to go more in the colder seasons, like maybe winter, maybe the beginning of the new year, you might want to bring some like long sleeves. Spirit jerseys are also very wonderful to bring along. Um, pants if you need them, or you can still wear shorts. Um, if you want, maybe you could even wear shorts that look like, or swim trunks that look like shorts. If you do go on those water rides, you do get wet. So sometimes you just want to be able to have a quick dry right after. Yeah. There are those times when you do special kind of dining, kind of like a little bit fancier, like when you're at uh, Grand Floridian and Arcootie's, or you have a nice dining area somewhere in Epcot or even Disney Springs, you might want to bring either a nicer uh, dress shirt, dress pants, Bow ties if you feel like it, suits for the gentlemen, lovely dresses and jewelry for the women, you know, something along those lines if you do want to have those dressier moments when you have some fancier dining. And if you're staying on property, it's easy to go back to the room and get changed for those special moments as well. Yeah. Now, something you want to be aware of is you're in Florida when you're at Walt Disney World and it's going to rain periodically. So you're going to want to make sure you have ponchos, okay? Order them ahead of time. They are very expensive. You wait till you get them in the park. Mm -hmm. um, we usually ordered ours off Amazon. You get like a two or three pack. You know how many kids or family members you have. Um, you can also even order um, some of the shoe covers if you're planning on wearing shoes. I prefer to wear uh, sandals the day it's raining. I love Tevas. They're a great shoe to walk around in. Yeah. Oh, something that I was going to pop earlier when you are wearing shoes or Tevas or anything like that, make sure you break them in before you go to Disney so you yeah. don't get blisters. Very smart. Now, even though you're bringing ponchos and you're going to bring those boot covers, you're going to want to make sure you pack multiple pairs of shoes, uh, especially if for some reason it pours and your shoes get wet. You're not going to want to walk around in wet shoes the next day because they are going to take a little bit to dry. Yeah. So just make sure you bring a couple options, some tennis shoes, sandals, flip-flops, and then, of course, if you're going somewhere nice, a pair of just shoes or which, heels. Yeah, which also means you probably need to bring some extra socks just in case it rains during the day and you're gonna, you are gonna—you don't want to walk around in wet socks all day, so you bring an extra pair just so you can put some dry stuff on. Now, to dive into a little bit to the travel aspect, 
you want to make sure that you have your passport or an identification that is up to date. Passport clearly has to have everything, all the information on there. And then either you have to have an up to date license or an ID for whoever is going to be traveling. And you want to make sure that starting 2025, you're going to want to check um, wherever you're traveling from, because for us in the States, they are going to require a real ID. So that's going to be um, a special ID card when you do travel. So make sure that you stay up to date on all of your travel documentation, because there's nothing worse than getting to the airport and, well, you can't get where you need to go. Right. And speaking of airports, when you're getting ready to book your flights to go to Disney, our recommendation is going to be to try to go as early as possible. So, so when we go, we're usually on the plane by 6 a.m., if not before. Um, coming from Chicago, time change by the time we get to Disney, it's usually around like 9 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. That's going to help us optimize our day because we like to hit the ground running. So if that's you, if you're like, we're going to Disney, we're going to go all day long, get an early flight, get down there, spend the day, enjoy yourself. The reason that you also want to get an early flight is if something happens, you know, weather related, the airplane breaks down and they have to delay it, you have time to rebuffer mm -hmm. when you can get on the plane. If you wait till later in the day, it can make it harder if there's no more flights out, then you have to push everything to the next day. It can be like a whole domino effect. So our recommendation is get there early if you're working or you need to go later in the day. Also a great option, but that's just kind of our thoughts on it. We understand with people or families that have a bigger family, it might be a little bit harder to get everyone up that early. So you might have to do a later one, but since it's just us two, that's why we always like to just go early in the morning, just so as Mitchell said, we can kill the rest of the day at Disney. And speaking of families, some of you might have to bring a stroller. Um, make sure you just check the dimensions of your stroller because Disney has a specific dimensions that are allowed in the parks that you can bring. Or I know they have some rental strollers that you can get that will work, but I know some people want to bring their own strollers. Just make sure that you check the dimensions before you get to the parks or even before you get to the hotel, just so you have all the information that you need. Yeah. And if you don't want to bring a stroller, we also know some really great rental companies that will drop off the stroller to your resort and pick it up for you on the last day, which makes it smooth sailing for your whole vacation. Now, we definitely have to talk about schedules while you're at Disney. So sometimes people come in and they're like, all right, nine o'clock, I'm here. 9.05, I'm here. 9.07. If you plan your day like that, you're going to drive yourself crazy. You're going to drive everybody else in your group crazy, and you're going to have a terrible time. Okay? Mm. That's just real talk. The best thing to do, especially if it's your first time going to Disney, plan out three or four main things that you have to do. And then anything after that is just going to be a bonus. You're clearly going to get more than three or four things done. But if you set yourself up that way, it's going to set yourself up for a successful vacation. And remember, the magic of Disney is kind of what you make it. So if you go in with a negative attitude, you're not going to have a great experience. But if you kind of go with the flow and adjust, you're going to have a great time. Yeah. So things change all the time. Ride shut down, weather happens, so other things can cause other problems. So you will have to be flexible while you're at the parks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's good to have those like three golden or golden things that you want to do. Yeah. And the app's going to come big play here. It's going to tell you when rides are shut down, when yeah. lines are short. You know, if you're taking kids, they're going to have random meltdowns. Take that midday nap. Well, Take you that might break. have a random meltdown. Who knows? Yeah. Anybody can. Yeah. So just make sure. <laughs> plan, but don't over plan. Yeah. And you don't want to under plan either. There's like a sweet spot in there. Now we have reached the end of our part four of Disney 101. And guess what? You should be ready now to go to the parks and have the best time ever. Now, if some of them seem confusing, or if you have still have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you missed our other videos, please check them out, like them, subscribe to our channel, and you should be ready. Are you excited? Because we're excited for you. But if you need help, we're here for you. We're happy to help. We have some inside tips other than what you just saw in our videos. And we have some fun itineraries or even some packing lists that we thought would be great for to share with you all. Yeah, I mean, so we pretty much just gave you a quick overview of what you needed to get your baseline started for your trip. But we take care of all of that. You know, we take care of your dining reservations, your, reser your hotel reservations, um, dining. We give you a set itinerary that 
we think you and your family would enjoy. We get up and make your dining reservations. We do all of the things. All so if you don't want that hassle, we would love to work with you and get you set up on your next magical vacation. Yeah. We take the stress. Str- yeah. We take the stress away and we give you all the magic. Well, I'm Michael. And I'm Mitchell. We are with Magical Keys Vacations. And we just unlocked our final Disney 101. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye.